you can fit quite a few goodies in this 14.7 liter mini ITX tire. And you've made a very good choice in these SEPT mesh lishes for your next SFF build. I've done a few videos on this case already, but today let's do a step-by-step -step build guide for your very powerful gaming rig. Welcome to Machines and More. I'm gonna talk through some of the build components, but then let's get right into it since this will be more of a detailed gaming build guide. And I'm making this guide primarily for someone who hasn't built an SFF case or someone who's new to PC building or walking uh, parts over from something like an ATX build. But of course, I hope this is helpful to everyone who's interested in this case. This build isn't going to be very difficult, but I'm going to be a little bit more meticulous about the cable management. Uh, the mesh this is a great starter case. So let's just talk real quick about the case here. The one I'm building in today is the white PCIe 4.0 version. And at least as of the time of the video, the dual mesh panel is the only panel configuration that's available with this particular riser cable. And I definitely recommend going for the 4.0 version if you have a PCIe 4.0 board and GPU. For this build, we'll be using the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and uh, pairing that with the EVGA XC3 Ultra 3080. And this type of pairing is ideal for a serious gaming machine. Now those are your two main components. Uh, one thing is because I'll be showing you the so-called standoff mod, you do have to use a cooler with a low CPU block height. So I'm gonna be deploying this uh, Corsair H115i Pro because it's the only 280 I have with a low enough pump height. But uh, this radiator is going to be a pretty tight fit in terms of the length. So I would recommend going with something a little bit shorter and uh, I'll list some options down below, but uh, if you use this radiator, it's going to work marginally, but just be aware it's super tight. So I'll talk through the remainder of the parts and I'll give you a bit more detail as we build. Let's get started. All right, you won't need any specialized tools for the build. You just need a Phillips two screwdriver and a micro screwdriver then uh, some flush cutters or scissors to trim the zip ties. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a little prep work. Uh, once you've got the case unpacked, we can pop up the panels here. And I'd recommend just taking off all of them right away. That way we're not impeded by anything. Your case is not gonna come with these cables pre-managed. I've already done this to, to kind of show how I'm gonna lay it out. And if you have a different version of the case, that's fine. The build steps are still the same. And where there is a slight variation for the glass panel, I'll note it. Now, if you have the PCIe 3.0 riser cable version, this is the 4.0 riser cable, uh, there's gonna be a slight variation for the glass panel. And I'll note that when we come to that step. You have the PCIe 3.0 riser version and you have a PCIe 4.0 compatible board and you don't have integrated graphics, uh, you're gonna have to make sure that you're able to force the board into PCIe 3.0 mode. Uh, it's a bit tricky, so that's why I recommend the 4.0 version. That's your build specs. So right out of the box, we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, mod. It's a standoff mod. Pretty popular with a lot of meshlicious builds and we're gonna locate this adapter here, this is the standoff tool, comes with your hardware kit and it just pops into your screwdriver like that. So pretty convenient. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a little bit more breathing room for cable management. I've already loosened these up so I can just take these off. So it should look like this. You should have four uh, standoffs right here. So I'll leave this kit linked down below these are M3 standoffs, which is a little easier to find. If you have 1632 standoffs, you can just extend the stock ones with an additional 20 millimeter standoff. And uh, so pretty handy. You can use it for other projects too. So the way I've done it is I've taken one of these shorter standoffs, put a nut on it, and this is a 20 millimeter piece. That approximates the roughly 26, 27 millimeters we'll need. And you'll see it's female threaded at both ends. What we'll do is we'll pop a screw through, okay, the hole, and then uh, we'll just uh, tighten it up this way. So we'll do just thread this through. It's not actually engaging the, the tree, it's just it needs a little help to go through. I'm 
I'm going to do since I'm here. I've taken off the screws from the riser cable. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm actually going to extend it out. Uh, this is only possible because I'm using a two slot card with the 380 XE3. But I'm just going to pop these standoffs. Now these aren't the same. These have a screw at the bottom, so just make sure you don't lose that. This is female threaded on both ends. And then this again because I didn't get the a good angle on this shot. So, uh, so this is the standoff that I'm putting on the riser cable side. This is the 20 millimeter spacer, and uh, this will push out the GPU just enough. It doesn't have to be in 20 millimeter increments. Uh, you can adjust. There's no real concept of slot spacing down here. There's enough flexibility with a riser that you can kind of just anchor your GPU down wherever it's appropriate. So I've just put two and then a screw through on the other side, similar to how we did the motherboard risers. And the nice thing of having a kit like this is that you can kind of play around and experiment. Find the right one that works for you. Um, you may have to add or subtract a, a multitude of combinations available like this. The other thing we'll do, make sure we just take this off and we're gonna swap this one to the inside. We're doing this because we did the standoff mod. If you're not doing the standoff mod, there's no reason to do this unless you're actually shifting your board out. Okay, and that would require the whole divider to be shifted. Um, here, we're not actually changing the position of that divider. So I've already done the build and I took it apart just so I had the optimal cable management uh, to show you guys and I left it here, but uh, this is how I would run it and we'll work on the cable management first just because it's a little more challenging in this case. Uh, for this build, I'm going to be using this uh, Corsair SF600 power supply. This is, uh, it's enough power for this CPU and GPU combo, but uh, you know, it's totally fine too if you want to use a higher powered unit. I'm also optionally using a set of mesh cables here. They're, these are regular ATX length. This is fine for this case since actually the cables travel uh, quite a distance uh, to manage properly. So first up, I'll talk through the cables. This is the 24 pin, pretty easy to identify. This will connect to your motherboard and we're gonna route it. So it's gonna come out and around this way, all right, later on. So we'll just kind of put it roughly into position here. And next up, this is the EPS cable. This provides power to the CPU. It's a little bit different. You'll see this has uh, a cleave in the middle here. So this is how you identify that. Uh, the PSU cables, they're often labeled as well. So just make sure you know that you're routing the right one here. And this one, I would typically have it come around this way. And that way it can still loop around and connect in this top left corner. So this is kind of roughly where we'll position it. And so this is the other end of the EPS cable. This is where it'll hook into the power supply. These are gonna be your PCIe power cables. You're gonna need two of these. And uh, this will hook up to the GPU, all right? And so you'll see this is uh, a six plus two. You put it together for eight pins and this GPU will use eight plus eight. So just make sure you got two separate ones. Have these kind of tidied up around here. Uh, I, I, you'll notice this is not tight just because I want that slack uh, once we fit the GPU in there. And then we've got these to the right length. We can kind of pull the cable back and then tighten this down if needed. And this is another cable here as well. Finally, because of the AIO cooler that we're using, we're gonna need a SATA power cable. You can also use this for HDDs or SSDs if you're running one of those. But um, I don't have the one of these cables where it just has a single end. So unfortunately, this is a little bit more cable to manage, but uh, we'll make it work. So how you install your power supply, that's gonna vary if you're using the glass panel. So if you're using the glass panel, you can do one of two things you can flip the fan in um, and then that way it can draw air from 
the middle of the case but there's a lot of cables here and there's a partial uh, it's partially covered here so that's not the best way if you're going to do the glass panel what i would do is uh, instead of mounting it on these holes i'd inset it to this uh to this set here and then just screw it in there because that that gives you a gap uh, for for the power supply to breathe but since this is the PCIe 4.0 riser cable version and there's only a mesh panel version currently that's what we can mount this on the outermost part and we'll just make sure that you've got this rubber spacer in here for the SFX power supply pop this in like that and then these are your power supply screws that come with your power supply. Okay, one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna start connecting the cables up. These are all gonna be the same type along here, along the outside. So you can hook those three up first. And then your SATA power cable is going to go um, on, on this end over here. All right. But this one will, will come around. You can see I've got the 24 pin cable in here, um, right here as well. So that's where that is. That's a lot of cables to manage, but it will, uh, it will all make sense shortly. So this is roughly how we're gonna do it. Uh, say the cables uh, gonna be here. We'll tuck it in nicely later. Your PCIe cables, your SATA data, a SATA power cable and then the ATX cable back here, all right? All right, with all that done, let's move the case aside and let's prep our motherboard. A mini ITX board like this is the best for this case. Even though a mini DTX Crosshair Impact 8 can fit uh, for the motherboard, we're gonna go with this ASUS B550 ITX board and this board is just fine for the 5600X. And there's no real need to go more robust on the power delivery for a 5600X. I think the Gigabyte B550ITX is the better board, but uh, for the mesh, it's just the ASUS board is actually quite ideal since it has this uh, front panel USB-C header. The 5600X is one of the best gaming CPUs you can get right now, uh, especially for the money. It's not meaningfully far away from something like a 5900X either, and it just makes mincemeat out of high frame rate gaming. The single core performance is just so good on this one. Go ahead and open up this lever here on your board. And then we'll pop this in. Just like that. Now, you got to be careful. Make sure it's in the holes. The pins are engaged in there properly, okay? Just feel it before you tighten anything down, okay? Okay, we'll make sure rise in. Uh, you can read it this way from the uh, perspective of the rear I.O. And just press that lever down. Now the other advantage of going with a chip like this is that if you're doing something more than gaming at full load, it's not hard to keep cool. The power draw is just right uh, for the meshlicious multi-core performance. It's still very competitive with this CPU. Next, we can pop our storage in. For this build, I'm gonna go with a one terabyte Crucial M.2. This is an NVMe drive. Let's just unscrew the heat sink here, two screws. And I've already removed the plastic off of that, but you probably will have a piece, if it's a new board, you'll have plastic over that just to make sure it's removed. Um, what we'll do, just take out the screw here on your board. Okay, remember that uh, standoff tool? We can take that and let's just check our M.2 standoff, make sure it's tight in there. Might have to go to a slight angle. You don't have to over tighten it. All right, that's just to make sure that's good to go. Line the pins up, slot it in, all right, and screw it in. 
right? And we'll reverse the process. Just put this heat sink back on. All right, so storage is installed, CPU's on there. Make sure you have these brackets on your board as well because we're gonna need that for our cooling solution. We don't have to put the RAM on just yet. I like to reserve that for the end because it's kind of, it gets in the way of everything else. So we can bring the case back now and we can take our IO shield and pop that in. Okay, from the inside out, make sure it's all the way in. We can now hook up some cables on our board beforehand. Okay, before we put our board back in, we're gonna connect this cable up and a few other cables just to make it easier on ourselves. Uh, you'll see this one is the power switch. This is connecting to the front panel right here. And then this one is your power LED. There's a plus and a minus. Make sure you know which end is which and then your HDD LED, all right, just take our board. That is gonna be right here, right underneath the 24 pin connector, okay? It's a little bit tricky handling this, but what we're gonna do is just put the power switch right here. Power switch connects the top left, these top left two pins, all right. And then it's plus on the bottom, minus on the top for the power LED. And then the HDD LED, okay, gonna be plus on the bottom right. And then minus on the other end. Okay, just make sure, so let's just check here real quick. All right, power switch like this. Minus power LED, plus power LED, and then HD, uh, HDD LED, minus on top, and plus there. All right, so that's gonna be the front panel switch. We can also hook up our EPS cable now. That. Okay, make sure that's engaged all the way. Okay, the Corsair AIO we're using uses a USB 2.0 interface cable and that's to communicate to the device and uh, control the LED and the fan speeds based off of the coolant temps. So what we can do is go ahead and just route this USB 2.0 cable in this bottom right corner. You'll see one of the slots, it's not available. One of the pins is covered there. So at this point, I think you can go ahead and just pop the board roughly into place. Make sure you know that riser cable's right here, so we gotta keep it out of the way. All right. So we're just, uh, I haven't screwed it down just because we wanna make sure we have the cables where we want them. I'm gonna snake this down under here. Let's just sneak it under there. We can do that right here. And uh, check EPS cable. All right. Our riser cables here. Say the power cables out of the way. All right, so now we can thread in the screws. So we can use the same two and a half inch SSD screws. Those will work just fine. Those are M3. Okay, one, two, three, four. Then I'll snake the front panel IO cables right under the motherboard. I should have paid a little more attention to it when I popped the motherboard on, but that's all right. Got plenty of space here. All right, this is the USB-C header. Okay, looks like this. And then we'll just pop, that's the header right there. Okay, that's one cable. And this is the USB-A, it's just a single one. Uh, there's a little notch here, pay attention to where that is. That's going to align with the notch here. Okay. And then we'll just be careful how the pins are lining up. Okay. Right. 
that's good. All right, and then now we can connect up the 24 pin ATX cable right here. Okay, you can support this from underneath just because there's a little bit of flex in this case, but just make sure that every single pin is in there and tight. This is an important cable, all right? And we'll, we'll clean things up later on, but uh, you can kind of play with the cable comb as needed, all right? And so let's see, that's why the standoff mod is so awesome, because that's going to allow us a little bit more breathing room here. And we're at a point where we can just go ahead and put this riser cable in. So let's just make sure that this is uh, clear. Okay, make sure it's all the way in. And it's going to be a little more of a stretch because one, we've shifted it out and we've <laughs> moved the board up, but it, it, uh, it'll reach just fine. There's enough slack there. Just be aware that it's going to be a little tight, but all right, it's going to be okay. All right, the case is going to come with this extra plate on middle. This is where your rad's going to attach. You don't, you don't need this. This is for a 240, so we're just going to go ahead and take it off. Uh, you're probably going to want to store those screws somewhere safe in case you do ever run a 240. Just keep set this aside. We're going to take out this top rib to pop the cooler in, and then we'll put this back right away at the top. Just undo those. Now, alternately, you could do this at the beginning if you wanted. So this frees up the space here to put the cooler in. And to cool the 5600X, I'm gonna be using the Corsair H115i. Normally you don't need this much radiator to cool a 5600X, but we're gonna be running the fans in a way that um, takes in a lot of the GPU's exhaust. So that's what we're gonna be doing it this way. It's tight, but it'll fit. Just make sure you take your time. A little bit of stretching required, but it, it does all fit at the end of the day. And we'll take the, you could use the same screws that you used for the, to take off the 240 and just use those as your rad screws with this radiator. Or you can use the one that came with the, uh, with the case. Either is fine. They're all the same thread pitch. Okay, so these are the last set here. Okay, just like that. And now we can put this bar back. Just make sure you got everything in place. So then we'll just slide the rad fans in and then you'll just put the screws in. I wouldn't thread it all the way yet. You can see we're, we're gonna, it's pretty tight with the cables here, so we'll make some adjustments. down on the screws here you can see this fan is okay we just got to make sure that uh, the cables don't impede the rotation that a fan grill would be optional but uh, nice to have I just spin it and check okay you should be of this is bunched up here so that's gonna be just fine and then we'll work on tightening up the cables at the bottom. What I'm gonna do first is attach the pump. And this is the mounting solution for AM4. Normally these come with Intel mounting hardware. So we'll just, uh, you'll take that off, but this will just slide onto here like that. Pretty, okay. And uh, you'll make sure that this will slide on here like that that the hooks are here. 
And then we'll, it's already got thermal paste pre-applied. I'm gonna pull the cable through this top end. Just make sure the cable's exit here and then we can hook these up. All right, and what you'll do is tighten these down progressively. You don't wanna do it all on one side. You wanna balance out that mounting pressure. This is a two point mounting solution. So we do have to make sure the tension is even. Can you notice on the SATA power cable, there's the, this is a, a tack cable. So that's gonna give the speed of pump back to the motherboard. We'll pull it off because we're gonna run this underneath all the way under. And because of the standoff mod, it's pretty easy to just get this underneath here. And as for this cable, well, you can hook it to any header, but connect it to your CPU header. And that way your motherboard is not going to freak out that there's no CPU fan connected. And that's the gray one right there. Okay. And we can take this cable nicely into this recess here. Okay. You've got your fan cables here. We routed our fan cables up here. These are just the two 140 millimeter fan cables. Just connect it up at the top and we'll organize things into that recess as well. Okay, it's tightly connected. And then we can kind of organize it into here. This is that USB 2.0 cable. We've got it running in this channel here. Um, everything is zip tied along with that EPS cable back here. So as to keep things clean. And I've routed the SATA power cable down under here. So that's where it's gonna make the connection right here out of sight. This is the USB 2.0 cable. We'll just route it to the port on the pump head and that'll connect right there. Not the prettiest cable, so minimize that whenever possible. And you can probably even uh, tie the uh, zip tie these all together so that it looks like it's one piece. Go ahead and you can fold these tubes down this way so that they will clear. So cinch up all these cables right here and to make sure these tubes stay flush. Here I've used a long cable management tie. This I might wanna move around, so I'm not using a zip tie here, and uh, we'll just secure here for now. You can see what that tie is doing is keeping this away from the fan blades. Go ahead and make that SATA power connection back here and tuck it away nicely. All right, just a quick check on things. We've got the cables managed. Uh, just uh, give the fans a quick spin just to make sure they're not impeded. Um, both end, both fans should be clear. No problems there. Um, cables, all the cables are plugged in here. PCA cables, ATX cable, SATA power cable connected there. Pump head here, give that just a once over. USB 2.0 cable, all these um, fan cables are hooked up back. That's connected to the CPU header. Front panel I.O. cables. 24 pin ATX, power supply is secured. And then uh, I'll show you how I've managed things back here. It, there's a ton of space now because of those standoffs. So you all you had to do is keep this out of the path of the fans. And that's not difficult with all these zip tie points. So you could do that uh, alternately. You could even just cinch the cable up on itself. That's time to, let's just pop the RAM in and then we'll finish with the side here before we do the GPU. Just gonna make sure these slots are open. The ASUS board, they're just one set. We'll just open them like that. There's a long side and a short side, long side, short side. We'll uh, insert it like such. Okay. All right, so the RAM is in there. Um, this is Team Group's Extreme 30 uh, ARGB RAM. 
This I'm gonna go with a 16 gigabyte kit here. It's this one clocks in at 3200 megahertz CL16. You can run 32 gigabytes if you want, but 16 is perfectly fine for a gaming build. And if you want a little bit more of a boost, then I'd say go for a 3600 megahertz CL16 kit. All right, we're almost done. We can flip the case over. You can go ahead and uh, close up this panel if you want. Now we, now we can pop the GPU and I've put in one of the thumb screws here. You'll notice it's not uh, threaded down all the way. Uh, we gotta open this slot. Okay, make sure it's open. And then what we can do is just line it up. And then you'll just pop it in. Now be kind of careful here because we're not tightened down yet. So then you'll grab another thumb screw. Thread that in just like that. Okay. Okay. So our GPU cables are here. And I'm just going to take this. And you can just insert these both in to your card. Make sure you have enough cable here. Okay. Make sure you got both ends in there. All right, so we got the two power cables and we've inserted the card. We are good to go. Let's just tidy up these cables a little bit. up the slack okay we gotta make sure there's very little slack there otherwise it's gonna interfere with the fans okay make sure they look nice check everything all right then we can Make sure you close this guy up. It's in there. Okay. You can see what this does here is it spaces out the card from the back plate by the, the amount of the standoffs. So here the card is pushed out a little more towards the mesh panel, which allows more of a clean air intake. And previously the card would have been shifted in in this case, because the original standoffs are the six six millimeter ones, uh, we've pushed it up basically a centimeter and a half or so, but 14 millimeters. Alrighty, I hope that was fun. Uh, congrats, you've finished your Meshlicious build. I'll give you a few thermal benchmarks right now so you know if everything is working properly. For that, I would just go ahead and fire up your favorite title once you get Windows installed 
and your game's loaded. Uh, for CPU only performance, you can pick a tool like Cinebench. I like to use Blender uh, Benchmark and you know just run it for something extended at least 10 minutes just to check out the temps in a hardware monitoring application. If you're using a Corsair cooler like I did, uh, the IQ software that will let you control the cooler will also give you that information as well. At fan speeds of about 1200 RPM, which is, I think it's the fastest that we'll need to run these uh, radiator fans, and GPU fans of 70%, uh, gaming temps with a graphics card at full utilization would be at about 76 degrees and in the high 60s, depending on the utilization on your CPU, so what title, what frame rate you're playing at. And uh, this is on PBO Auto set to max boost. CPU clocks are hitting 4650 megahertz dependably, so it's working well. For CPU intensive multi-core renders, I did lock the clocks here in the voltage to get some consistency, but you should be looking somewhere in the high 60s. Uh, you could do better with faster fans, but again, these fans aren't close anywhere close to be maxing out. So it's just a point where I think it's not meaningful to go louder and faster for the rad fans anymore in terms of CPU performance. Anyhow, hope that data point helps. I hope you enjoyed this build guide and the build process. Uh, you picked a really great case and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this one for a long time. I'll be doing a video soon just outlining the benefits and process and differences of doing the standoff mods that I discussed today. So please go ahead and look for that. Please subscribe and give a like if you enjoyed the content today. I'll leave links down below for the goodies and thanks for watching today.